Hello and welcome to a brand new top 10 video brought to you by the Full Force Podcast and Generals Joe's Reborn.com with me, Chris McLeod, aka Diagnostic 80. On this socially isolated, socially awkward, and socially unacceptable episode, and with the Snake Eyes Giorgio Origins movie just around the incredibly long and confusing corner, I've decided to take a look at my personal top 10 action figure versions of G.I. Joe's most iconic Ninja Commando. No particular rules or scales here, just what I think is awesome. Also, make sure you stay tuned to the end if you want to find out what we are giving away to one of you lucky viewers. Getting straight into it at number 10 and going back to the source material with Classified Version 1 from 2006. Yes, I'm starting with a figure that didn't come out until the mid 2000s, despite being canonical lore ever since Larry Hammer decided to lift the lid on Snake Eyes' origin story in the pages of the G.I. Joe a Real American Hero Marvel comic. The figure was finally released by Hasbro in a comic book three pack with Lonzo R. Wilkinson and Tommy Arashikagi, or Stalker and Storm Shadow for the uninitiated, and it came with a reprint of that iconic issue number 26, which delved into the back story of the Three Joes whilst in Vietnam as a long-range reconnaissance patrol. It was somewhat of a surprise that this figure didn't come out in the vintage era considering the synergy between the toys and comic at the time, but I'm glad they decided to do this set and immortalise the trifecta of ex-Vietnam Joes. As for the snake eyes in the set, I really love the little touches here. The hat dipped low and the fake deco shadow over some of the face to help keep him mysterious, and the amazing addition of the picture in snake eyes hat of his sister. As far as the build goes, it's nothing spectacular, but the parts make for a solid representation of the character design from the comic. Utilising a retooled 2005 General Hawk head as well as gung-ho and tunnel wrap parts from different years. Make it predominantly green and you have a pretty cool take on Snake Eyes before he was Snake Eyes. I also like the fact they added the extra deco for the camo on his hat. Lovely stuff. Honourable mention has to go to Jim Godfrey's amazing modern Long Range Recon Patrol customs that he made for me based on my love for this original set, and when I put them with my 118 scale Merit International Limited UH-1 Huey B Shark Mouth Vietnam era helicopter, it made them look even cooler. At 9, we have a very cool customer. Yes, it's his Arctic getup, but not his first, with version 35 from 2008. Rewind back four years to 2004, and we got our first Snake Eyes from issue two of the Marvel comic in that really cool black winter jacket, green trousers, and the old style commando head. He came packed with Peanut Head Scarlet in all white, a really cool Quinn figure, and a reprint of that previously mentioned comic as well. That figure would have been in here had it not been for the even more awesome 25th anniversary single carded version that was released in 2008. Before the trend of super baggy winter gear became a thing, which had a rather odd effect on some of my faves like Sub Zero and Blizzard, this figure gave us a very cool new body that would be replicated for a number of others moving forward and included his version 28 commando head from 2007. Another lovely addition was that of Quinn's weasel skull necklace that he tracks down at the end of issue 2. All in all, a super interesting update for the time and really made him stand out from most of his previous versions released to that point. Honourable mention here goes to the Arctic Snake Eyes with Timber from Sigma-6. I love this particular version of the character and really enjoyed the overall designs from what was a very divisive toy line. His additional snowboard with a firing missile topped this off as a really fun figure. It's yet another quirky take on the character at number 8, with his rather radioactive version 36 from 2008. When it comes to homages in toy lines, they don't come much better than this. Everyone instantly posts lists of better homages in the comments. Well, this is my list and you will disagree, but I just love this figure. Based on his appearance in the first G.I. Joe Sunbow miniseries, and more specifically the episodes The Mass Device Part 2, Slave of the Cobra Master, and The Mass Device Part 3, The Worms of Death, in the episodes, Snake Eyes first sacrifices himself to save his fellow Joes, sealing himself inside a cave that fills with a radioactive gas while trying to procure crystals that power the mass device. He escapes the cave and ends up in a snowstorm. This is where he meets Timber for the first time when he rescues the wolf from a trap, an act that creates a bond between the two forevermore. Despite the harsh conditions, polar bear attack and radiation poisoning, a blind old man rescues them and using an herbal remedy soaks the radiation out of him, curing Snake Eyes and sending him and his newfound wolf friend on their way. 
amazing. The figure was a reuse of the version 28 body from 2007, cast in translucent orange plastic with a grey deco covering the majority of the figure. The effect is a fun one and gives the impression that he is irradiated, as he was in the cartoon. They also made a brand new left hand for him so that he could hold the canister accessory, which is super cool. He was packed in the first of five DVD box sets with the Master Vice DVD of course, Timber, a Red Suit Diver Baroness, Sergeant Stalker version 10, Cobra Trooper version 8, a flatbed cart with mass elements and the console part of the Master Vice as well. At the time I was living in the UK and these were not easy to get hold of, however I managed to get this one pretty soon after it was released and boy was I blown away. Yes, there have been better figures of these characters since, but the added value of these sets with the awesome accessories, cool homages and presentation just adds to the cool factor of this figure for me. In at number 7 is a real renegade. Yep, 2012's Amazon exclusive G.I. Joe Renegades version 57. More controversial opinions isn't the first and won't be the last in this list. I was a huge fan of renegades. I thought the show was tons of fun and introduced new characters each week in really interesting ways. I enjoyed the designs quite a lot and really loved the animation as it harked back to shows with a similar aesthetic like the Men in Black cartoon, which I still think is hugely underrated to this day. Snake Eyes was in and out of the show but was effectively a core character and had a cool new design. His two action figures from the show were pretty spectacular and I had a hard time choosing my favourite. I ended up going with this guy over the single carded 30th Anniversary Renegades version 56, mainly due to the closer approximation to the show in question and a kick duster that Mac from Always Sunny would be proud of. He came packed in an Amazon exclusive set with Cobra Red Ninja version 3, Duke version 45 and Storm Shadow version 42, whose designs also mimic that of the Renegades cartoon. The light grey colour scheme is just way more interesting with the white visor, fancy white knee pads and stylized footwear. Yes, he looks a little janky without the main jacket part on, but that's the whole point of the toy. He needs that jacket to look extra cool. Plus, you've always got the other version to fall back on when you want him in a full-on tactical fight mode. He certainly wasn't dripping in accessories like his predecessor, but the two swords and intricate cross sheath setup was neat and could connect through the duster, so props on that. This version also got the nod because he is made up of all new parts and that is always an exciting aspect in a line like this. I fully expect this to be higher on many people's lists, but for my number 6 I've gone with this Pursuit of Cobra Classic version 54 from 2011. The rise of Cobra brought us many things, a poor film, an oddly compelling toy line with some really good figures and of course a superb follow up in the Pursuit of Cobra. I don't think many people expected the line to change so dramatically following the movie figures and vehicles, but it did and my word did we peak. The Pursuit of Cobra gave us superbly executed new updated takes on existing characters, new characters and tons of accessories to the point of raising shipping prices. In the case of this particular Snake Eyes, he shares a rather symbiotic relationship with another honourable mention on this list, the 12-inch Sideshow Collectibles 2009 and exclusive 2012 figures. This 4-inch version of Snake Eyes was first inspired by that 2009 Sideshow release and they really do share a striking resemblance. I have been informed by ex-Hasbro designers who worked there at the time that this was a conscious decision to release that 12-inch version in 4-inch form in so many words, so it was no surprise that Sideshow introduced an exclusive three years later with the extra head that this 4-inch version included, thus completing the incestuous relationship between the three figures. That makes it sound like they had sex with each other they did. And let's face it, any figure wearing a tactical turtleneck is a solid win in any lifetime. That really cool secondary with the double sheath connector is up there with the craziest and most ridiculously awesome secondaries of all time as well. Great stuff. At number 5, this is going to cause all sorts of drama as it's arguably the most iconic of the bunch. 1985 version 2 and the making of an icon. You more than likely fall into one of two camps with Snake Eyes, Ninja or Commando, but there are a number who enjoy both aspects. His first version was strictly business, head to toe Commando and I don't mean he wasn't wearing any underpants. Other versions have been strictly for my ninjas and version 2 was a little of both with a few design aspects thrown in that would give him a look that would last a lifetime. Having missed a lot of the early Joe years and to some degree the early Palator years as well, version 1 just wasn't on my radar until well after version 2 had been released in the Action Force range and immortalised in possibly the greatest comic book the earth has ever known, Action Force Weekly, and one of the most iconic covers ever conceived 
in issue two. The figure itself comes packed with his trusty wolf Timber, who looks awesome in his aggressive attack mode stance, a move which gets extra bonus points on its own. Would have been so good to get another deco hit on him, but at the time I was super happy with his loyal buddy, and typically the two were also inseparable in my play patterns circa 1987 through to 2020. I don't consider Timber an accessory, as he's a character in his own right, but Snake Eyes did get more cool stuff in his bubble, including a wonderful backpack with a cool clip system on one side that acted as a sheath for his rather superb sword. Topping off the ensemble was his arguably more iconic Uzi, not a huge complement of killy death murder items, but he's Snake Eyes, he is a weapon. Hector Garrido, rest in peace, absolutely outdid himself with Snake's card art as well, a definite upgrade in that respect, with a pose that homages version 1's random pointing, this time given a purpose, directing a possessed timber to sick him. The figure's deco is also surprisingly interesting. He's not just all black like his predecessor, or black and a tiny bit grey like his Action Force doppelganger Stalker. No, this figure is magically transformed with just a few grey straps, belts, the visor and bandolier, and the standout silver mini crossbow on his right forearm. Lovely touch, and well utilised in the UK comics. There have been so many attempts to recreate this beautiful action figure in the modern range, and I can honestly say that I just don't think it's been achieved yet. Yes, there have been better Snake Eyes figures since, but this version stands alone as never being bettered when they have tried to replicate the same design on a modern body. At number 4, I've gone back and forth over this one and it's version 51 from 2010. Our Resolute, the red-headed stepchild of the red-headed stepchild, although you could put Sigma-6, Extreme, and many other iterations of the brand in that category. I was blown away when that footage of Roblox and Duke battling Cobra Troopers in a forest emerged online from Jokon 2008 and even gave us a good look at the man of the moment in his brand new design with a throwback to the goggles of yesteryear. I was sold on Resolute and would ritualistically watch each painfully short episode as they came out on my phone in the Toys R Us break room in Norwich when I worked there back in 08-09. The darker, more edgier Adult Swim cartoon almost mirrored the far more violent and aggressive style of the Action Force comics for me, and was a really cool change of pace for the brand, even if it was only for a short period of time. I would have happily enjoyed more of that sort of stuff, but alas, as the story goes, the higher-ups were unaware of the violent aspects despite having to sign off on it. Clearly, nobody had given it a second thought, and before you knew it, Resolute was out there and they were angry. Well, I'm glad we got it, and now it's up there with some of my favourite Joe media, but I digress. This particular new cool design got two brilliant Snake Eyes figures, and I struggled to pick the one I wanted in this spot. Oddly enough, there were a number of deciding factors in choosing the Resolute box set figure over the Rise of Cobra City Strike version, and I will go into why. Interestingly, City Strike wasn't the first time we'd seen the body. That was created for the version 47 Rise of Cobra figure in the 2009 Rescue Mission set. He did get a cool new head though, and that worked beautifully for Resolute, and one of the reasons I chose this one, the goggles are bright green to mimic the scene where Snake Eyes wingsuits his way onto Cobra Island and uses his night vision to pick the perfect infiltration point. As good as that City Strike figure is, I prefer the lighter grey deco and I like the fact they included the glider to simulate the wingsuit scene. City Strike has some awesome accessories but this one gets the go ahead at 4 and thanks has to go out to Erica Rania's involvement in that figure's design and one of the factors related to my change of heart when making my choice. After all said and done though, I do prefer this guy and he deserves his place on this list. This will rock the boat, and I don't bloody care. He'd be number one if it weren't for some pretty astonishing action figures ahead of him, and let's face it, number three isn't a bad position when you consider Snake Eyes has had close to 100 versions in all scales. It's version 4 from 1991, or version 3 from 92 in UK money. Yes, he's brightly coloured, yes, his accessories are bright, yada yada bloody yada. I love this design, and he was a sensational figure at the time. Snake Eyes had been the all-black stealthy ninja guy for almost 10 years before this appeared. All of a sudden, he had blue and red and silver and light grey and black still on his person, and it was too much for many to take. On a personal note, this version intrigued the ever-living shit out of me, and won me over immediately. It's a rare occasion for me where a design moves so very far away from the source material, and yet regains some aspects of the character. I don't know how they did it honestly, he is unrecognisable from any of his previous versions at the time, but the new helmet, head sculpt, deco and cool gear design really screams Snake Eyes without saying the name out loud. 
work that sentence out. I'm being totally honest here when I say that the weapons and massive rocket launcher didn't bother me as a kid, and it was only later in life when meeting many new Joe fans that I started hearing the comments about those aspects in a negative way of course. After a while, I started slipping into those pack mentality mindsets and had to mentally pull myself away from them to a place where I could make my own mind up again. The figure is amazing and, honourable mention, even got a Hall of Fame 12 inch version as well, which made it to the UK although I struck out finding him on shelves as he was super popular. Suck on that haters. Number 2 will no doubt come as a complete surprise, especially if you know me in any way. I have gone with Hot Toys Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe Retaliation. Let me start by saying that I'm not the biggest fan of the live action movie so far. Rise of Cobra has become harder and harder for me to watch to the point where I avoid it as much as possible nowadays, and Retaliation, where it improved on its predecessor in certain areas, still stood firm in the cheesy but not in a good 80s way department. Having said that, both movies brought us an abundantly tropical f ton of product often eclipsing quality-wise the film it was based on. I also feel strongly about Snake Eyes in both films, who is arguably the best part of both cinematic features and even developed drastically over just a few hours of running time. The Rise of Cobra design on its initial reveal blew me away, firstly just because it was a live-action version of Snake Eyes. Fans bemoaned the lips but had forgotten that he had them on his version 2 figure. It was clearly an homage to that, but alas, it wasn't until the retaliation design emerged that the Snake Eyes from Rise of Cobra was immediately dated. I have to say that this design adds to what has come before and then some. The helmet and visor design is finally practical looking and devastatingly gorgeous in its lines and shapes. The small pieces of interlocking armour make for some interesting breaks, and those dark brown leather shoulder pieces are almost completely lost without a good close up study but man, does it give him something else. It is a huge evolution from that first Commando version 1, but he is instantly recognisable and despite being criminally underused in both flicks, was given a real personality thanks to Ray Park. Figures wise, he had a few retaliation turns in the 4 inch scale, but it's this beautifully sculpted, expertly constructed and superbly executed 12 inch monster that gets the nod. I have to say I have a soft spot for the 12 inch scale thanks in part to Action Man, the UK palatoy version of Hasbro's original fighting man, G.I. Joe. The Hall of Fame expanded that love for me and Sideshow blew my balls off, however Hot Toys takes it to the next level and this stunning specimen of a truly exceptional design gets my number 2 spot. That's right, we have made it to the promised land and I'm sure you can guess where I'm going with this. Yep, at numero uno, it's Hasbro's deluxe pulse exclusive G.I. Joe classified series Snake Eyes. Boom. Is it because he's brand new? Is it due to the fact that we hadn't seen an official G.I. Joe Snake Eyes figure since the days of Toys R Us and the 50th anniversary product, which was only in 2016? There are a few extra factors in here for sure, but you only have to hold this figure in hand to understand why he's topping Snake Eyes Mountain. As I wax lyrical about the retaliation design before the last explosion, I mention the fact that he was redesigned but completely recognisable. The exact same premise counts here as well. I love the extra deco touches and multiple textures, panels, straps and belts etc. Some have said he has been over designed but I don't agree in the slightest. All of those visual aspects just add to this gorgeous figure in a scale we haven't seen since… perfect use of the Vader clip there. We've had 12, 3 and 3 quarter, 4, 5 and 8 inch, multiple minifigures and world's smallest and finally we can count G.I. Joe in the 6 inch scale with this brand new and very exciting classified series. One major factor in all of the upper echelon choices in this list is articulation. The original O-ring design in the vintage era made for some very dynamic positioning, with the modern era taking the ball and running with it. What the 6 inch scale does is twofold. One, it allows far more detail in the sculpt to show through, which can be a gift or a curse depending on the quality of the sculpt work, and two, it allows for some pretty incredible advancements in articulation and poseability. This Snake Eyes can get into some rather astonishing positions thanks to butterfly joints, chest crunches, multiple knee hinges and so on. The figure is dripping in accessories as well with his multiple hands, sword and sheath, backpack, hunting knife, pistol and silencer attachment and iconic Uzi. He also has more melee weapons than a Ninja Force accessories sprue and a very beautiful and ornate weapon stand that looks to have been swiped directly out of crouching timber hidden snake eyes. I won't even get into the stunning multi-level and quite strikingly exceptional packaging and Tracy Ching card art. 
pretty sure I just did. They smashed it out of the Ray Park with this guy, so huge props have to go to designer Lenny Panzeca and sculptor Fred Axon, as well as all the other Hasbro employees and freelancers who were involved in the creation of this glorious Ninja Commando. Bravo everyone, absolutely wonderful job. So that's it, we've come to the end of the video and yes, I did promise a very special competition giveaway, so here it is. One of you lucky viewers could get your cheeky mitts on a deluxe Hasbro Pulse exclusive G.I. Joe classified snake eyes, courtesy of the Full Force podcast and generalsjoesreborn.com. All you have to do is comment on the YouTube or Facebook post for this very video with your favourite version of Snake Eyes and why. The winner will be picked at random and announced on Sunday the 24th of May. Good luck people and stay safe out there. I'm going back to sleep on Snake Eyes Mountain.